Thanks for making it to the last presentation of the day. You're all the brave ones, or you're all my friends, because you all want to hear about Chrome. So, uh, so thanks for coming along. Um, so my name is Mike Wyatt. Uh, work for Google, been at Google now for about five years. And I look after Chrome go-to-market, Chrome Enterprise go-to-market across EMEA. And um, I just want to remind you about one thing. There will be a survey. So if you like what you hear, and you want me to keep my job at Google, then uh, give me a good score. No, no, score me as you feel fit. Don't, uh, don't make it up. So yeah, there is a survey um, in the app if you want to do that while I go through the presentation. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Um, in this session, we're going to look at the seven myths of Chrome Enterprise. Um, so we're going to do some myth busting. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Um, we're also going to look at the current cloud landscape uh, and what, and we're going to explore some of the benefits um, that you can give to frontline workers by using Chrome Enterprise devices in the field. And really excitingly, we have um, Edwin from eCare. Um, and we're going to do a bit of Q&A at the end, because Edwin's actually um, deployed 10,000 Chromebooks to all of his workers, um, frontline workers in, um, in, uh, in Holland. So really looking forward to getting Edwin. And you're the first people in the world to actually see some real commercial outcomes of that deployment. So we're going to share some um, stats with you that no one's seen. You're the first people to see that. So looking forward to getting some feedback. If I get time, we'll do some Q&A as well. So if there are any questions, we'll try and, try and fit that in at the end as well. So um, I'm, just going to, I'm going to talk about Chrome, and I'm going to talk about Chrome Enterprise. So um, while we're out and about talking about Chrome Enterprise to customers, there are a certain amount of myths that always come up, or a certain amount of uh, misinformation that always comes up. And I'm going to go through those seven today. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a history as to where we've come in the last 10 years with Chrome. Um, and the first sort of, our first sort of um, reiteration of Chrome, if you like, was the Chrome browser. Um, as you know, we grew up on the web. We're 20 years, 21 years of age. That's where, that's where Chrome came from. Um, but we wanted to look um, really at, bra at the browser 10 years ago and, and what was the um, real experience like for people using a browser in, in this growing modern web world. Um, and we looked at all of the browsers that were out there. I won't name them, but there were probably some of them aren't around anymore. But we looked at a lot of the browsers that were around 10 years ago. And we realized that actually, a lot of them weren't that good. They weren't really fit for purpose. They weren't really um, you know, giving you access to applications quickly, and they weren't really giving you good, um, good search results. So um, typical Google style, we thought, let's build our own. Very brave thing to do. Um, so we did that in 2009. And a few years later, it actually became the top browser in the world. So without any marketing funds or without any real go-to-market efforts, it just, it just naturally became the best browser. So, we thought, right, we're potentially onto something here. Um, we then looked at bandwidth. We needed, we, you, you need a fast um, internet in order to, to access applications through a browser really, really well. So we did, a, um, we, we did efforts with the ecosystem to really spur and speed that up. Um, and then fast web applications. So you know, if you have fast web applications, a fast browser, and a fast internet, customers around the world um, are going to have a really good experience, unless they're accessing those three things on a bad device. What I mean by a bad device is a legacy device, so a device that hasn't come from or hasn't been built or invented with the internet in mind. Um, so it's all very well running you know, complex web applications on a really good browser designed by Google, but there's no point if the taps keep crashing or if um, it's not a particularly good interface or it updates for seven minutes before you can use it. So we decided, actually, we've done a good browser. You know, our vision is to get as, the, the world's information to as many people in the best way possible. But if you can't access that on a de good device, then we're not giving our customers a good experience. So that was our next um, sort of iteration into, into the world of, of IT. So, um, and in fact, if you look at this com comic, um, you'll see that that really shows us that, that, that story. And, so I just wanted to differentiate between Chrome Browser and Chrome Enterprise, because people get a little bit confused about that. So Chrome, Chrome Browser is a browser that, that most of us use. Chrome Enterprise is really a set of devices and a core operating system based on a browser that enables you to access that web in a really, really good way. Um, and we've come a long way. Um, you know, A lot of people think Chrome is maybe an education device or a consumer device. But actually, in the enterprise world, we've, we've come a long way. And we've, we've been spending a lot of engineering resource and effort um, in getting to where we are now. Um, and in fact, here's a sample of some of the landmark um, 
sort of moments that we've introduced, including things like managed guest mode, um, access to the Play Store, so no access to a million plus applications on a Chromebook, um, and also Linux containers. So, and we're continuing to drive this innovation as we talk to more of our customers to understand how can we make Chrome and Chrome OS the real default into enterprises um, for devices and operating systems. So let's have a look at some of the myths. Um, and hopefully some of these you'll think they're not myths because I know the answer anyway, but, but let's go through them. So first of all, everyone knows Chrome is really, really good in the ed education market. We're number one across a lot of, a lot of um, geographical um, places across the world. So everybody knows that, everybody gets it. Um, but what people don't know is that actually um, the growth of Chromebooks and Chrome OS outside of education in the enterprise has, has been really, really um, awesome as well. So in a, in a fairly flat, um, you know, 2% growing market, we've, we've actually grown 33% in the last 12 months. So Chrome OS is really starting to resonate with a lot of customers out there, and it's really starting to, um, really starting to increase market share as well. So myth, one, myth number one, it's not just education device, it is actually an enterprise ready for enterprise device as well. Um, and if you look at certain customers that we've closed in, it, it's not just in one particular vertical or one particular use case. It's spread across a whole plethora of, of different verticals. Um, healthcare, for example, we have eCare, who we're going to talk to in a moment. Um, we have Good Care Group. Um, I won't go through them all, but financial services, we have, um, we have customers, public sector, manufacturing, retail, um, technology. And if you look at one of our biggest customers, Veolia, which sits in the utilities space, um, we also hit that vertical as well. So, so we're having a lot of success across a lot of verticals. Myth number two, um, I'll go over here, mix it up a bit. Uh, myth number two, Chromebooks aren't enterprise grade. People tend to think Chromebooks as 200 pound, 300 pound device, plasticky, my kids use it. Uh, my daughter comes home from school and uses it to access all of her homework on it. Um, that's actually not true. Um, not only are there now a variety of different form factors on Chrome, so whether that be two-in-one devices, whether it be tablets, uh, whether it be Chrome boxes, whether it be Chrome bits, there's a now a whole different types of Chrome um, devices that you can get. So a variety of different form factors, depending on what your needs are, we can match those. Um, they're now premium devices as well. So not only premium devices mid-range and low-end, but we've now got really good premium devices. And we're, you know, with all with the latest Intel chips in there as well. And also, um, you know, devices from some really awesome OEMs, the best OEMs in the world, in fact, including Lenovo, Asus. Uh, you can read there, Asus, um, Dell, which we recently, um, recently announced. Um, Lenovo, HP, and of course, Google as well. In fact, there's a new Google, uh, new Google device, which is just about to hit the streets. So, so really good. Um, a really good selection now of, of good quality Chrome devices out there for the enterprise. Um, the third one, the one that we get hit with all the time, probably the, probably the biggest myth out there is that Chromebooks don't really work offline. Um, so first of all, they do if you tether. That's the easy one to answer. If you've got a mobile phone and you want to tether your mobile phone to your device, you can use it. Um, just did a, a couple of hours on Eurostar a couple of days ago, and I can vouch that does actually work. So um, as long as you've got a good uh, cost-effective data plan with your, with your mobile operator, then tethering's a really, really good one. But you can also, um, you know, if you're using G Suite, for example, you can also read, respond, and search and archive Gmail. Um, you can configure your G Suite applications to work offline. And then when you come online, it will sync up, and then, and then it'll work fine. Um, and you can, use, you can use apps within uh, the Google Play Store offline as well. So there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of Android apps that you can use offline as well. And then I think more importantly, it's not just about whether it's offline or, or online. It's also about um, can you use enterprise applications via the Chrome browser um, or in other ways as well. So for example, as I just said, we opened up the Google Play ecosystem. So there's now a million plus applications that you can use on a Chromebook, um, which gives you the benefits of, of something called safe browsing, um, if you use the browser to access applications as well. Safe browsing um, protects, I think, 2.1 billion users at the moment. So it keeps 2.1 billion users um, online safely. Um, you can also um, access legacy apps. So if you have legacy apps, and a lot of companies still do, you know, we're at Google Next today talking about the, the journey to the cloud, but there are still quite a lot of companies that are, that are still thinking about that or still going on that journey. Um, in that case, you can use VDI solutions. So um, we've now done technological partnerships with um, VMware, Citrix, um, so you can use those to access your, your offline legacy apps as well. Myth number four is really around updates. So um, imagine if your end users in your company or yourselves as individual users, imagine if you just didn't have to worry about updates. Imagine if they just 
there was no prompt to update like you have on, on iOS or Microsoft. It just happened in the background. It just happened when you turned your machine on, you know it was updated to the latest, um, to the latest uh, release from Google. That's how Chromebooks really works. So it just happens in the background. So every six weeks, um, we produce an upgrade to the operating system itself, and then we security patch as well more frequently depending on, uh, on when that's needed. So um, no downtime, makes you a lot more productive, and it gets you away from that horrible um, <laughs> process where you have to actually wait for your laptop to work when you're actually trying to be productive. So um, yeah, Chromebooks can't be secure because they don't use antivirus. If anyone uses other, anything other than a Chromebook, you probably had to go out and buy um, antivirus. So you probably had to buy a software suite or a version of software yearly subscription to put on top of your PC. Um, the way that Chrome OS is built uh, and Chrome devices are built is that the operating system itself um, doesn't enable viruses to be installed on it. So you don't need extra antivirus on top of, on top of a Chromebook. Um, and there's lots of different versions of, of, of security built into the um, built into the Chromebook as well. So for example, um, sandboxing and verified boot. So all of the devices, when we go to our um, OEM manufacturers with specs on how they should build a, um, a Chromebook, um, we mandate that there should be a verified boot, boot built into the, into the Chromebook and a trusted chip as well. So, um, so really, really secure. And that's quite important because security information market, I think, forecasts that it's going to grow by 9% over the next 12 months to something like $124 billion. Couldn't do a presentation without having a $100 billion stat in the slide deck. But yeah, so security is a really, really big thing. Um, and again, a bit of a misnomer out there because people just can't get their head around why you wouldn't put antivirus on top of your, on top of your laptop because that's how everyone has, 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 um, has done it so far. So you don't need that. Number six, Chromebooks don't have enterprise grade capabilities. Um, they do. <laughs> so when you get a Chromebook, if, you wanna, if you're an IT department and you want to manage your fleet of Chromebooks um, on the road, then you get a, a, um, access to the Chromebook um, Enterprise console. And within that console, your IT admin department has over 200 policies um, to ensure lots of different things. So within those policies, you can, you can uh, look after your fleet. So you can easily device enroll a fleet uh, up to thousands of units. You can remotely disable a device, for example. Um, with updates, you can manage and um, pin the versions of the update. So if you don't want to give a, a Chrome OS update to all of your users at once, you can try it on a few users and then, and then push it out to, to, um, to, to more users once you're comfortable with that actual update. Um, you can assign release channels. There are different modes that you can um, pick as well. So for example, if you just want users to have an ephemeral road or a kiosk mode or a managed guest mode, these are all um, use cases that you can use a Chrome device for that you can select through that, through that console. And then all the device policies. So lots of different device policies. Which Wi-Fi do I allow people to connect to? Um, and so on and so forth. So over 200. And we're adding new policies to that management console um, every six weeks, every release as well. Um, so Chromebooks don't integrate with my legacy IT stack. So a lot of people think that a Chromebook is just a cloud-enabled device. So if I'm going to the cloud, if I'm somebody like Deliveroo, for example, who you might have seen on the floor today, Deliveroo have now gone 2,000 Chromebooks. They're a startup company, which is very advantageous because they don't have any legacy IT. They don't have anything on-prem. They don't have, um, they don't, they don't, they literally can come to market with a modern solution. But a lot of, we realize that a lot of companies can't do that. A lot of companies still have uh, legacy applications. Um, so there are ways to get around that. Um, so one thing that we built into Chrome is, is the ability for it to work with Active Directory. You know, there's a huge, um, huge Microsoft estate out there today. Um, so that was a really big, really big plus point for a lot of our customers. Um, you can access not just G Suite, but also Office 365. Um, so you've got that Office collaboration and editing uh, factor in there as well. And then virtualization. So as I mentioned before, v it works really well with VDI providers such as Citrix, uh, Amazon Workspace, and also VMware. Um, and then lastly, VPN and SSO support. So, so we, there are still instances where if you do have all legacy applications and you, are, um, and you haven't gone completely to the cloud yet, there are obviously some use cases where Chrome doesn't fit. But primarily, with all the things that we've been building into the OS over the last couple of years, we've now fixed almost all of those gaps, which is pretty cool. So they're the seven myths. So hopefully they're all out of the way now and you've all learned a little bit more about Chrome. Uh, if you have, then my job's done. If you haven't, do you want me to go through them again?
No, you don't. Good. Right. Um, so I just want to look into the future because we're we're building on um, Chrome OS all the time. We have you know many many engineers, um, a whole development platform, um, and more importantly, we listen to our customers every day. So if our customers say that they need a new feature or or there's something within Chrome that's missing or or, or Chrome doesn't work in their network, then we um, funnel all of that up into our engineers and we're and we're continuing to build on it, and um, and we're really trying to build a new future of work. So we're really trying to allow companies and corporations to um, really transform their employees. So we know that employees are now used to the cloud. Everyone in this room uses a mobile phone. Everyone in this room understands um, or has got used to the fact that applications are available all the time. Um, when was the last time your mobile phone didn't work? When was the last time you couldn't access Uber, WhatsApp, Facebook? Um, or any of the other applications that that, um, that we look at um, that we look at um, all sorts of content on. It just doesn't happen anymore because we're now used to um, we're just used to things being always on and, and working all the time. So, so this is good because it means that if people are coming to your organisation, they expect the same thing. They expect these devices to be working all the time. And um, and with this huge um, you know popularity of all these applications and, and mobile technology. Um, people are now asking the question, why does my workplace have to be different? Why can't I have the same experience as I have on the train on the way to work or on the way home from work as I do when I physically get into the work? You know, why do I have to be tethered to a desk? Um, why should my work life be any different from my personal life, for example? And we're seeing this real shift um, in the marketplace um, from employees that are just expecting this seamless work. And ideally, work from device to device. So if they have a mobile device and they have a, a work laptop, wouldn't it be nice if they just synced and worked really seamlessly together? Um, and in fact, Forrester found that, uh, a recent survey, Forrester found that 78% of employees um, believe that fixing issues without losing productivity is the most critical thing that a work device can have. So that's pretty high. That's, that's almost everybody. 94% of information workers also say that they work while commuting to and from work. Um, so we need to think differently about how we give people access to all these applications and the devices that they, consume, uh, that they use to consume this, um, this information on as well. So there's this new breed of worker that's emerging, um, or has emerged. Um, interestingly enough, one in four uh, information workers are already deemed as cloud workers. So this, um, this revolution or this evolution is already happening. And cloud workers, as I said, they, they expect to be connected and productive uh, martini any place, anytime, anywhere. If you're as old as me, you'll remember what that means. If you're not, basically, um, they want to access location and device wherever they can and the business apps wherever they can. Um, and our job at Google is, is really to, to empower these employees and empower companies um, to provide them with the right tools. Uh, and we believe um, in Google that that is Chrome. And, and, um, and a lot of companies are now coming on that journey with us as well. Because that gives you better business outputs and just makes you more productive as a, as a, as a worker. So how can we ensure that, that the worker is changing as companies are keeping up with the right tools that they need? So 80% um, of the global workforce is now deskless. So one of the successes we've had over the last 12 months is selling into what we call a frontline worker base. I just want to explain what a frontline worker is, because the chances are if you run companies or if you work for companies, you've probably got some form of frontline workers in your business already. So frontline workers, there's 800 million of them um, globally, if you look at um, the stats. Many of these are deskless. So this is going to be people like um, cashiers, customer service representative, uh, healthcare workers, um, construction teams, break fix people, uh, retail assistants. They're really the backbone of every single major industry that's out there today. And there's hundreds of millions of them. And they're customer facing. So they need to have the knowledge and they need to have the, the impact in front of customers um, because they are the, the, the sort of uh, the window of the company, if you like. And they have a huge impact on customer, um, customer experience. In fact, another recent um, Gartner survey said that 89% of companies expect to compete primary on the basis of customer experience. So 89% of customers now believe, 89% uh, of companies now believe that customer experience is probably the most important thing for keeping that customer, first of all, to buy something from you, and more importantly, to come back. Because 140% customers who have the best experience um, spend, on average, 140% more compared to those who have had a bad experience in the past. So it's the reason why you use Amazon. <laughs> it's the reason why you use these websites that just give us the experience that we require. Um, 
So frontline workers are very, very important. They're not just, they're not just the face of the company, but they, they need the up-to-date information all the time to do their job very, very accurately. But it's a completely untapped market. Um, not completely, because we're trying to change that. So, so for example, um, if you look at the devices that have been sold out there in the marketplace today over the last 12 months in enterprise, um, only 12% of those devices have gone to frontline workers. So there's a real mismatch here, because you've got frontline workers that are the face of your company that, that decide whether you're going to be successful and competitive in the future, and yet you've given them the worst kit. <laughs> you've given them that device that, up, that updates really, really slowly or doesn't give them access to, to information. So there's a real mismatch here. 75% of them don't seem to be getting the right type of information at the right time. So if you're a, a sales associate, for example, and you're in front of a potential customer and you don't have that up-to-date information, guess what? They're probably going to go and walk and, and find it from another retailer or, or another establishment. And this pain of lack of investment um, when it comes to managing communications is a real disconnect. And, it, and it's a disconnect in that it's also affecting staff turnover as well and, and staff retention. And in fact, the people that have the worst devices, there's a lot of other reasons for this as well, but they, they feel disengaged and it's, there's a higher turnover in that workplace. So there's lots of different um, reasons why equipping frontline workers with the right type of device is absolutely crucial. And it's just going to increase because technology is increasing day by day. So, um, so my sales team and, and all of our partners and our ecosystem and, our, and all of our OEMs who support us, they're really going out there and trying to um, really attack this frontline space. So to give these frontline workers a much better device. Um, because it gives you better employee experience. You know, employees just enjoy having a brand new device that, that has, gives them access to information more quickly. For companies, it gives you a better customer experience as well. It's really nice when some, when a, when a, if you're in a store when someone comes up to you with a, with a, with a tablet or, or a laptop and they've got that information that you need on the spot. That's a really nice device. It gives you really, really good customer experience. Um, it gives you stronger security. It gets rid of paper. You know, there's still a lot of frontline workers that use paper, that use forms. Um, I won't mention the NHS, for example, but there's a really good example in the UK for people that come from, 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 from the UK. You know, the NHS, it's amazing how much paper they still use. They shouldn't be doing that. You know, we're, we're at a cloud event today. We're all using our mobile devices to access everything. I mean, we're in technology. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be cutting down trees to, um, to, to share information. Um, Updates to devices, again, it should just happen automatically. You shouldn't, if you're an IT team or, or a marketing executive or a, or a CEO, you shouldn't be worried about you know, these frontline workers out there being secure. It should just happen by default with their devices. Um, and then, of course, it's better value as well. So Chromebooks are not generally just a more cost-effective device than, than other manufacturers and other OSs that are out there, but it's much more cost-effective to manage. Um, and also keep secure as well. So, so it just gives you this improved decision making across the whole value chain of, of all the frontline workers inside a company. Um, and I think, you know, we talked about a lot of work, workforce challenges um, across different industries, but I think frontline workers can really benefit from um, giving them cloud enabled devices. Um, so, whether it's empowering front of house, I talked about with retail. Whether it's, we've got a lot of customers that actually use um, Chromebooks for training and communication. You know, if you're bringing in new employees into your business and you want to train them and use maybe four or five cloud applications, why would you give them a big clunky fat, fat client device to do that? Just, this is absolutely no point. Digitizing back house processes, I said, you know, reducing the amount of paper that you use and then enabling information on the go. So, difficult one to explain, but if you could give these frontline workers a bit more um, flexibility and access so they can actually look at all these applications and do a bit of work outside as well, then that makes you more productive and, and, um, and more, you get more value for your employees. All very well be talking about the myths. I've talked about the myths. I've talked about um, frontline workers and a really, really good use case. Um, it's not just frontline workers, of course, that, that use Chromebooks. It's um, also knowledge workers and lots of other workers across, um, across the globe as well. Um, but one really awesome story, uh, and I'm going to get Edwin on stage in a moment, that I want to talk about is, um, is really eCare. So um, Edwin's the CEO of eCare. As I said, he's just deployed, just finished deploying 10,000 connected Chromebooks. So there are some Chromebooks out there that take LTE chips, mobile phone chips in there, so they're connected all the time. Um, so I'd like to introduce Edwin um, onto the stage to talk about that experience. So first of all, Edwin. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Right. Hi. Hi. Hi, Mike. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah. 
Do you want to go to? Sorry, John. Well, I'll yeah, say yeah. this. Sorry, you say that. Um, so, yeah, just talking about frontline workers. I think the first thing would be really nice just to introduce yourself, uh, what you do, and maybe what eCare do as well. So. Yeah, we don't got enough time actually to explain. We have. We, in fact, but, um, we're doing good. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to do a small summary. Good. Um, good. Uh, we started the company about 12 years ago, and together with the, um, so eCare started 12 years ago. Actually, the idea behind eCare actually to make healthcare uh, affordable again. Uh, in our country, the Netherlands, um, the overhead on healthcare was very high, uh, 30, 40 percent, and we wanted to change that. We did that together with uh, founding a company called Butor. It started in December 2007. Uh, with uh, one team uh, and three people. And nowadays, they get, we got um, over a thousand teams. And if you look at the whole company, uh, we have 15 and a half thousand people employed. So in 12 years. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's good for the EK company as well as you get the revenue of the healthcare company. Nowadays, we got um, uh, close to 100 customers. So it's not only the uh, debutor company that we will show data of which I'm excited about. Um, but basically what we do is we uh, actually not only uh, do all the IT stuff for Butor, because Butor is a network company. They don't employ their own IT people. That's all being outsourced to us. Uh, but we do PPO, so invoicing and all the other things that normally a healthcare company does is all done by us. Yep. And the Dutch system is uh, less resilient than the NHS, I guess. So that's a little easier, so keep that in mind. Wait all the things that you will see. So I think before, I think you're using G Suite and Chrome, so, so right. before you chose G Suite and Chrome, what, was the, what were the main things that you were sort of looking for? What, what were the challenges? Yeah, that we, we made some classical choices actually yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah, we had the iPads, so we had 10,000 iPads uh, in place uh, when we switched to Chromebooks, um, and we were using Office 365. Um, let, me, let me talk about the iPads yeah. a bit. Uh, we had some uh, issues with iPads, and uh, I will tell you two. Um, tell more, but uh, two that we are uh, significant actually for making the choice to go to, uh, to Chrome. Um, one was actually um, uh, enterprise identity management, so, um, which means that we own the iPads as a company, but well, we distributed to an employee, employee left the company, we had uh, two-factor authentication, and we could not access the iPad again. We could swipe it, but it's owned by the former employee. Uh, people who left or forgot their number and their email. Um, and with that, we uh, formed about 500, what we call 500 iPad orphans. So iPads that we have, that we own, but we cannot use. Wow. And that's all of because um, uh, the Apple company also uh, that doesn't have an enterprise uh, strategy. It's, it's more a customer strategy. It's great to work with, not in an enterprise environment, especially when you grow the way we grew and we started with iPads and they grew. So that's one of the things that changes. The other one is that uh, talking about it's healthcare workers that we work with. And uh, as we do a lot of things electronically, there's hardly any paper involved, yep. um, only with the GP. Sometimes it helps, uh, but that's the only one. So we, they have to t type a lot. And then uh, a keyboard, uh, having it uh, being online all the time, that's, that's a big advantage as well. Um, so that's, uh, I could get much yeah, more yeah, than yeah. that. So, so, so decided to look for a new solution, basically. iPads, hard to manage, not, not necessarily fit for purpose, quite yeah. expensive as well. Yeah. Um, it, 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 the, the numbers grew and grew, yeah. and the management of uh, iPad. So uh, an iPad, in, in, in a, if we install an iPad, it took us, uh, uh, in average, uh, uh, an hour and a half. And we have management software on it. And with the Chromebook, it, 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 it took us uh, 12 minutes. Wow. So that's, uh, that's a big, big, big wow. change. And we, we never, it, um, as you will see in the figures that I'll show, uh, every healthcare worker has a Chromebook and a mobile device, so Android in this case, which is not normal, I guess, but it's normal for us because we want to com communicate, which is logical. Mm. But you, if you have twice as much devices than other companies have, you don't want to have the hassle with installing it and 
um, repairing it. Uh, we used to have uh, four cars actually driving through the whole of Netherlands to do all the maintenance. Uh, we, got, we got half now. We use it for different things, actually. So that, that's a big change. So you had four cars. We had four cars going through the Netherlands. Just keeping it all Yeah, we got 1,000 teams now. So that's, wow. you, you can imagine if you want to, to no, no, work no, no. on that one. So yeah. that's, that was, I think, do my math, 78 minutes times 10,000 devices. So I, I can't, I'm not good I at I do the math. So I mean, I, it, I can do the math, but it's uh, a big saving. It's a big saving. A and we'll we come on to the actual physical, um, yeah. commercial side of it as well. Basically, that's what it is. Yeah. to get to that. Yeah. So, um, so you went G Suite, so, so you started to look at other things that were out there, what, Correct. and you looked at G Suite and you looked at Chrome. Just talk about G Suite a little bit, because I know that's a great collaboration tool from, from Google and works really, really well in tandem with Chrome as well. Correct. So, so what, 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 how, did, how, did, how did you find these products? How did you find this, this other solution? Well, the, the, the honest answer, right. I was frustrated by Microsoft. So <laughs> yeah, I won't say too much about it, but um, it, it, it's not fair. But, um, yeah, we had a solution and we had a license problem with Microsoft because we work with independent teams. Um, a team has 10 healthcare workers, or what you call grown workers. Yep. We do it for over 10 years now, so we, we are fully in the cloud. And that didn't match the license agreements with Microsoft that change, well, every six months. Yep. Um, so we were, they, they did an audit uh, that we had to pay and they always find something that you have to buy more products. So that gets me more frustrated, and I don't need the products. So that, basically, that was the biggest thing. But another thing is that um, we wanted to integrate our product with our software, so the eCare software. Um, and it was much easier, actually, with the Chrome devices. So to give you an example, we make photos of uh, wounds. That's not the best thing that you want to make a photo of. But um, uh, what we used to, uh, what we did in, in, uh, with the Microsoft solution is that we, th they made the photo, then they upload the photo to the system, and that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, they use the Android device, they make a photo, and it automatically gets, because they know where the client, which, which client they're servicing, it's automatically added to the wound uh, records that's up there. And we use actually machine learning to predict uh, the health of the uh, wounds. Right. So with the color, there's some color thing. But that's another, that's another uh, like a breakdown session. I could tell a little bit about that. That's what we do as well. So we, we actually integrate it. So there's automatically access to the team drive. There's, uh, 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 there's access uh, automatically to the client drive, because it's, it's actually stored on the client drive. But it's also visible, actually, in our uh, electronic health record. So that's the way we play it, and that's a good thing that I got influence actually on the IT company as well as the health company. Yeah, yeah. So, so Microsoft came and ordered to you. You wanted to look at other things that maybe were a little bit more cost effective. <laughs> when, when we G Suite, so I, I yeah. guess got the benefits of collaboration as well. How, how does collaboration work among all those ten thousand? What, what were the benefits that you got there? Um, we saved actually on G Suite. We saved a little over twenty percent. Right. And then I did not look, but you will see the figures in generally because it's best, it's best actually to compare with other companies. But um, I, I think on the productivity side, so on time-wise, um, we saved less than 20%. I, I, the last figures I saw was something between 13 and 14%. Right. So, um, so, but it, we got a long way to go actually to do the integration. A lot of people use productivity suites like G Suite yep. and don't integrate with the software, but because we are software as a service as well, we are in the cloud. And uh, like I said, a little of the pro uh, priorities actually to develop, uh, that really helps out. I, I expect actually to save, well, in, in, the, in the next five years, over 25% on time. Um, wow. you, using machine learning, predicting, wow. and actually giving advice to healthcare workers because they, we think that they have to think for themselves as well when they are with a, with a client. So that's 25% more time in front of uh, basically what help, it helping people, basically. Again, yeah. I come back to what we yeah. wanted. We wanted to get healthcare affordable again. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what we need. It's getting more and more expensive. And, um, and, and to give you an idea, we don't have managers actually in our healthcare company. We only have coaches, yeah. and we got um, per 50 teams, we got one coach. 
Right, right. So there's 500 people, one coach. One coach. To give you an idea. <laughs> what was it? I mean, taking an iPad off of somebody and giving them a Chromebook, that's quite a big change. It is. What, 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 <laughs> yeah. what's, what was the feedback? What, what's the, what's it, what was that? Was that an e easy thing to do? Were, were people? Yeah, it was easy. It was, was it? Okay. Yeah. Um, that, uh, uh, people like iPads. Yeah. Uh, let's be fair. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the way it works. So what we did is we added some new features, actually, with them using the Chrome, and they liked the keyboard as well. Um, so these are the two things. So we integrated the software, like G Suite. Uh, and we, uh, what we also did is that we had 10 teams actually testing the Chromebooks. So and at the end, we said, well, is it OK that we get the Chromebooks back? And no one wanted to give them back. Wow. So I think that's the best thing to do. Uh, just let them use it. Um, and, and we did one on the back office as well. And um, within our company, we got only, and let me count, um, we got six uh, people who don't use Chromebooks at, uh, at the office. Right. And we only got 50 people at the office, to give yeah. you an idea. Yeah. And that's the only thing we need. Uh, yeah. So what, that's, a, that's a really good story. So uh, what, what, let me add that. Yeah, that's yeah. more feeling that they want different devices, yeah. and that we went in it, then that is really necessary. Yeah, yeah. So apart from sort of selecting the champions, if you like, um, what other advice would you give to people that, or companies that maybe are looking at G Suite, looking at Chrome, but maybe it's a bit too brave for them, too much of a step? What, what, what advice would you, what, what did you go through? What did you, what did you learn from that deployment that you could share? Um, yeah, I pretty much had an easy job because we are cloud enabled. We started with the cloud, we developed a web application. And, um, but if you want to uh, make a step forward, you have to explain what the cloud is all about. Yeah. and tell the advantages of the cloud. And I know it's a journey, but you don't want to stick in the past, especially when you're IT. I mean, we always try to do the next best yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the story. And uh, do something in the return. So if you, want to give, if, you, if you want to sell something, then it's always what's in it for me. It's, that's the way people work. Yeah. Um, so that's what we did. We, I, I'm in the business, actually, of seducing. Not selling. Seducing. Seducing. <laughs> yeah, it's diversity, I guess, <laughs> now, nowadays. But um, yeah, I think if, if the software is great, people are seduced to use it. You, you say, well, you have to use this. This is great. And then you look at it, and you think, it's great. Mm. It's very easy. You don't have to sell it. It sells itself. Yeah, yeah. And basically, that's what you have to create. Uh, but it's a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say? If you had one big aha moment where you started to deploy, what, what would be the big, the big aha moment where you thought, oh, I've really made the right decision here. This, this was the right choice for us. Maybe more than one, I don't know. Um, my God. <laughs> that's uh, not scripted, sorry no, about that. <laughs> nothing is scripted, I guess. So that's, that's good. Uh, no, the, the, the thing is that, that people adopted, actually, to the Google and to the cloud. That was aha, and that there was hardly any trading. So what we did is we moved people over from, well, let's say, to an iPad to the Chromebooks. And the only thing we did, uh, we got a guy actually who makes all uh, videos for all the changes that we do. So if you change things in the software, then people from the company themselves make a video. And he explains. So the own people are explaining what has changed and what's, what you can use it for. And we did it with Chrome devices as well. Yeah. So we made a very happy story. And we thought, well, we are going to have a lot of work to get people trained. And we didn't do any training. None at all. And then the next thing uh, in the office, there was a lot of resistance, actually, to move to Chromebooks. Uh, they liked their PCs yeah, and yeah. whatever they got. Um, and we had someone that actually knew G Suite and knew Chrome very fast. I took a one-on-one -on, -one on people that we think we have uh, most resistance. And Beside the five, six people that we were just talking about, yeah, yeah. that's only on the device. Well, on G Suite, we all did that. And on the, uh, we got a controlling department, a financial controlling. They still want to use Excel. So we said, well, if that's the battle, yeah. I lost it. Yeah, yeah. So it's still keep a few people. That's, um, yeah. Sometimes that's the way yeah, it, yeah. it works. But 99% yeah. of people went, went on the journey with you. So that was great. 
Why, why they're, did, they're pretty lonely now, yeah. right, being on Excel. Why did, you know, you said people resisted at the beginning. Was it because they just didn't know what Chrome and G Suite was? Or Correct, yeah. It was, okay. Yeah, okay. so you tell the story. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's a job for me and my team then to make sure more people yes. know about that. So you got a uh, so, big so, job actually. I'll, I'll, I'll be, oh, our challenge, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, should we talk about some of the? Yeah. Some of the, uh, some of the let, let, I haven't seen these before, so I'm. Yeah. Uh, let, let me. Person. Can I introduce this? Yeah. Uh, for uh, um, these figures are from 2019. These are week old. Um, I just approved it today. Right. You just saw it a couple of hours ago. Yep. Uh, these are. Um, uh, 2018 figures, of course. I mean, we cannot uh, send out 2019 figures because it's not at the yeah, end. Yeah. And um, keep in mind, this is a healthcare company. Uh, we got um, the, the company is 15 and a half thousand people. There's 10,000 people working on uh, the, the company that I'm talking about right now, yeah. and it has a revenue of over 400 million euros a year. Well, so okay. that's, okay. it's, 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 a, it's a big company, yeah. and we try to keep it uh, flexible. Um, so up and down, down scaling, that, that is very important to us. And very important to us to always use the last versions of software to be ahead of our competitions. Right, right. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Context, you yeah. got any questions about it? <laughs> yeah. Want to so, go that? Uh, so let's, let's, yeah. I was just going to pick a couple of these out, if I may. So um, on the workplace side, yeah. Workplace cost per, per full-time employee. Yeah. So there was a 15% lower cost across all of those employees. Yeah. yeah. So that was an immediate saving. Yeah. Uh, I, that doesn't look impressive, but it is. It's, it's basically the cost for Chromebooks. Yep. Um, uh, uh, so it's good. Uh, it's cheaper than that yeah. what you do yeah. if you buy other devices. Uh, so in general, from other companies then. Yep. And then number of workplaces, workplaces per FT. So what does, what does that mean then? Yeah, that's um, what you see is that in this company uh, we got nurses. The nurses work part time, that's, uh, uh, and then we got in average two nurses for one FTE. Okay. So every nurse has. So that's actually the math on on this one. Okay. And what you see is that in other companies they only got half of what we got, which means that half of the staff cannot communicate with the office or cannot see uh, the last version of the health record or whatever. And we got it all. So we pay twice as much on IT, on hardware. Um, but if you look, let, let's go to the top one. That's 3.3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. um, when I started this business, um, the average uh, amount of uh, I, uh, IT, per, or percentage on IT, was between 3 to 4%, depending on uh, the IT uh, level that you got. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, uh, most of the companies, so 2018, most of them have 3.9, that's the average, and we own 3.3. So with all the extra devices and the extra users that we have, uh, we're still much lower than, um, so that's good for your business, so, actually. So. so just to recap on that, so you, you've reduced your IT costs, yep. but you've got more people using devices as well. Yeah, so you've, so, so you've added. Yeah, me, people, more people, more devices. Everybody has a, a Chromebook. Yeah. And it, it, to get back to the iPad, if you want to share an iPad, then it has all the settings of the guy or right. girl that yeah, gives yeah, you, yeah. gave it to you. Nowadays, we, 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 you just log in in four or five seconds, and you got your own environment. Yeah, and then I guess oh. there's, there's additional benefits around yeah, yeah productivity but and collaboration. Even more. So it's cheaper. You got more devices. Yeah. And uh, look, look at the second line. The, uh, we got 42 points on the scale of 50. And the average on, on the IT uh, level that is up there. So we are much more sophisticated on IT than any other company. Okay. So, so we, we, all, we are double as good as all the other ones up there. And um, so, yeah, yeah. And, and we still have less cost. And that's based on more people using it and just, just getting more out of the, out of yeah. the solution. People would say it's atypical, but it's, I, I think it's, it, it's actually. Um, the result of choosing and dedicated choosing for uh, a cloud strategy. So, what about the what about the last two? Then you got not network cost per FTE. Yeah, that's very. So, so, so what I say? We what, got, what's the net? What do you what do you mean by network cost? So, is that um, there's anything well, well, like a DMZ, and yeah. you have um, all these servers, and all the, so we don't have them. You don't have them. Just got no. all of them completely. No, okay. and uh, okay. same thing is licenses. That's all. 
So basically, the Chrome Glass is out there as well. All, all baked. So, okay. Um, but the, to give you an idea, when we started in 2007, if you had had a, a network, then you had to hire networks to go to all these offices. And now we got the internet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we only got the internet, and we got devices, and all the other things are in the cloud. Yeah. That's why uh, we, it's so much lower. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one, personnel costs per FTE. Yeah, this, this is, uh, that, that's, yeah. a huge, that's a huge figure, especially with 10,000 people out there. That's yeah, that's actually uh, that, that's the reason why IKEA is involved. Right. Um, these are the software costs. Yeah, yeah. So basically, they have uh, the G Suite, and they got an ERP from IKEA. And it uh, has a health record in it. It has billing, uh, yeah. planning, scheduling, all the other things yeah. in there. And the only thing that they need is an online uh, accounting program. Um, and we do specific HR things is hired as well. But that's only used by people in the office. So we only got a, a few licenses. And all the other things, So, like if you uh, have leave or you want to call in sick or whatever. It's all done in our ERP. In the cloud. So it's very yeah. user friendly. If you have a very user friendly and you have everything integrated, so using single sign on on any, any device they have, so we can communicate with hospitals, with GPs, with, and it's just with electronic messages. There's no paper. We, we are completely paperless yeah. unless there is a physician that wants us to still fax a sheet. Right. Some, that sometimes happens. Still got fax machines. Yeah, wow. we got that actually in the main I don't office. I don't know what that is. I've forgotten what that is. Oh. Sometimes it happens. I mean, that's, it all has to do with trust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then there's other benefits around that. You know, there's, there's other things that aren't on this slide that, that yep. you know, happier workers, probably less, less, less churn as well. So, you know, because they've got the better tools. But more importantly, it is a healthcare company. Yeah. So, it, you it know, is. you're spending more time in front of, in front of patients, which is, which is a, yep. a, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Anything else you want to add to that? Because it's the first time I've seen it, so they're, they're good for yeah. Thanks. Yeah, the, the report is actually much bigger. Yeah, uh, um, and it's in Dutch. So and I it's in Dutch, so I had to translate. <laughs> uh, I translated about 12 pages uh, to, to get it out, but that's too much, actually, for this presentation. Yeah. So I took out there, there are uh, 10 major points that, which are uh, uh, very good, um, and, and that's what these two. Great, great. There wasn't any bad news to give you a note. There wasn't bad news. We, we will publish it and make it sure that it's available in, in English as well. Yeah, we're talking about putting it on the Chrome website, so we're, um, yeah. we make it, make it available to everybody. That's brilliant. Thanks. Um, we've actually got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to throw it out. Anyone want to ask any questions? I and mean, we've got a real live customer on stage, which is, there you go, one at the back. Yes, oh, there's a mic coming for you there. Good, thanks. Oh, oh. switch hello. it on. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, hello. hi. <laughs> Ik kan misschien de vraag in het Nederlands stellen. Ja, tuurlijk. Ja, ga je gang. <laughs> no, no. Showing off now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> As Belgium in there. Uh, yeah. I'm on your side. I'm uh, uh, in the IT department. You didn't uh, chime in on that one. Uh, how was the reaction of your IT people? And are they uh, still in a similar shape? Or did you reduce on IT as well? Um, yeah, this company um, did not have uh, IT uh, people in there, uh, so it's, uh, um, but let me tell you something about, they, they got two people actually, they do reporting um, from the data that we have from the electronic health system, uh, that uh, insurance company asked for them, so they got two, uh, and they are assisted by uh, a data scientists that we have, uh, that looks at all the data that we have, and predicts, for instance, for fall incidents. So what we do is we, we're not interested in um, uh, setting up that updates ready for users. I mean, that must be boring, I guess, if you're an IT specialist. Um, if you do that, I'm sorry uh, for that. Um, but you want to do interesting people that helps actually the company. So we got these two people. We got actually a scientist that helps out. And what we do is we predict there are triggers, actually, for falling incidents. And we look at falling incidents and to the triggers, and then we uh, identify high risk. We go back to the insurance companies and tell them that we can do a prevention program. And that's actually the way you use IT, not on um, you don't want to be bothered by Microsoft updates or um, 
we, we, we bothered by uh, network problems yeah, yeah. or security leaks. Well, we are bothered. Yeah. We are looking into that. But, um, so what we, what we try to do, if you want to do that from the IT department, try to get to a company that works according to the cloud. Your, your work will improve for 200%, because it makes your life a lot easier. And instead of maintaining IT, you're developing IT. So you develop new, new possibilities, right? Because in the past, when we started, there was a lot of um, trust, uh, mistrust, actually, on the IT department. IT department was the policy, and there were no, not uh, uh, possibilities, actually, for healthcare workers to ask for new things or look at possibilities that were out there. Because that's, that's the policy, that's yeah, the IT yeah. policy. Like, like in my, my days, um, only managers were allowed to have a laptop. Yep. And if, a, if someone else asked for it, that we say, well, that's the policy. We didn't ask why they need the laptop. So um, I think that's the main message I would send out. Yes, there's a lot of jobs in IT that will uh, disappear in the next couple of years, next to five to 10 years. Yep. Um, but a lot of fun jobs that will come back, and a lot yeah. of new jobs will come back. You can reassign those yeah. people to more, more interesting yeah. projects, yeah. Yeah, just one last story before we finish. Um, I, was, I was actually at a CIO of a county council a couple of weeks ago. They just deployed 3,000 Chromebooks, um, been a Windows house for 12 years. And, uh, and I said to him, what's the, as an IT, as a CIO, or CTO rather, what's the most aha moment for you with Chrome? And he turned around and he said, well, we used to be the enemy. Uh, my IT department used to be the IT crowd in the basement who'd pick up the phone and go, just plug it in and put the phone down. So he said, now we're seen as actually people that come to the party with innovative stuff. We're not just there fixing old kit. We're actually producing and, and giving um, the, the county council workers new stuff and stuff that they really like to use. So it's completely changed the, uh, the opinion and the attitude of, of IT in that organization. So, and he's also, going back to your point, he's also able to now um, you know, refocus those people on things like AI and ML and, and really funky projects. So, good, we've run out of time, unfortunately. Yep. I could talk to you all day, sorry about that. Yeah. But I well, hope that was useful. Well, um, we can go to the pub and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah good, good, there you good go. Good stories. Drinks, yeah. drinks yeah. on Edwin, did you hear that? <laughs> you did, good. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just a quick one before we go, we, there is a Chrome stand um, upstairs, and we've got all of our latest Chrome devices on there. There's also an Intel stand upstairs as well that also has all, their dev all our Chrome devices on there as well. Please come along if you're interested more about Chrome Enterprise after this amazing presentation, which you're all going to give me feedback on now. Um, yeah, come and have a chat with us tomorrow. We're, we're here all day. So thank you very much. Okay, Enjoy thank your you. evening. Thanks thank a lot. You guys. Thanks.